Champions and Gents, Spring over the Combat lumps. Federation presents three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, in the blue corner, a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and four losses. He stands at 180 centimeters tall, weighing in at 66.2 kilograms. Fighting out of London, England, by way of Pakistan, Memosh, the renegade, Raza! Across the cage, his opponent stands in the red corner. A mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and three losses, standing at 173 centimeters tall, weighing in at 65.9 kilograms, representing underdog team, fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan, Nurjan Bizon Arkashev! Between the limb length and the actual height and their stance, it's quite an advantage. You're going to see him try and use it. He's in a fairly bladed stance. He's going to try and pop in and out, attack those legs, slow his opponent down. As we know, both fighters as tough as they come. We could see all the makings of an absolute all-out war here at Brave CF 62. Both men a little bit tentative to start, just downloading the data, trying to get a read on one another. Which is usually indicative of the fact they know how dangerous one another are. Big shot over the top from Raza, wasn't far away. Another big shot over the top this time from Bizon. When you face the southpaw, that's your biggest worry, is that right hand. Well, that's a great point to make, Kirik. Orthodox Raza taking on southpaw Nurzon Akashev. Southpaws are rare in combat sports, even more so in mixed martial arts. Memos doing a good job trying to keep his foot in the outside of his opponent's foot and attack that leg. Oh. Again, not far away with that big shot. Nurzan Back's looks like he's... To, Back's a little close to the... He's, he's moved away from that fence. Memos momentarily at his back, way too close to that fence. Against somebody who's so dangerous with submissions as Nurzan Akashev, you don't want to find yourself against the cage and almost inviting the takedown. You want to be in as open as possible, that open forum of the mat. So if he is going to try and take you down, he has to really work for it. The swing and a miss. Memos is in right now. This bladed stance doesn't make for very quick lateral movement. In order to escape, he's got to go straight back. He needs that room behind him. Memos needs to be wary of overreaching with the shots a little bit. There's a shot right open up the middle for Memos, whether it be an uppercut, whether it be a front, front kick. kick. You can see the hands, the hands and elbows are somewhat flared from Nurzan. There's a shot there if he wants it. Nurzon seems like he's intent on, on trying to land that big overhand left. Now Mosh Raza trying to throw feints, trying to elicit some sort of a reaction from Nurzon. Nurzon holding back just a little bit, hoping he can counter. Nurzon somewhat creeping, trying to pu push Memos back, maybe trying to set up a takedown. There it is. Big takedown for Nurzon Akashev. This is exactly where he wants to be, but Memos going for wrist control here. Ninety seconds to go in the first round here. Nurzon Akashev on top. Memos has a half guard that can be a little bit of an anchor in this sport. Not necessarily the place you want to be when there's elbows coming down. I would like to see 
I'd like to see Memos turn those hips in a little bit more, work a knee yeah. in, and pop up to standing. But that's easier said than done when you have Nurzon Akashev pressuring you against the cage, using it like cheese grater. Neither fighter has absorbed much damage here, so they will be fresh going in. Just as I say that, Nurzan Akashev fires off a and beautiful knee. And follows it knee. up with an elbow to the melon. There, there we go. Almost beginning that stand up. Need to be wary of a guillotine attack here from Nurzan. You put your head in the wrong position, he will wrap an arm around it and choke you out. Does have three wins in his professional career by guillotine. Short elbow, elbow coming. Boom! And, and again. again, there it is. Third time. Patrick. Ten seconds, Brave Nation. Oh, that's a big shot from Nurzon. Turning it up, landing big shots in the third, or sorry, in the closing stances of the first round here. Phenomenal round ending for Nurzon Bizan Akishev. The only benefit I can feel there from Mamosh is he knows what Nurzan Akashev is trying to set up. He knows that he's going to use his strikes to set up the takedown. And he knows that he cannot find himself with his back pressed against the cage. As soon as he, as soon as he feels himself being pressed against the cage, he has to use that lateral movement to escape. Has to use that to get away. Has to keep the fight in the open forum of the matted area. His basic strategy is sound. Keep his lead foot on the outside of a southpaw opponent's lead foot. Attack at long range with a side kick. When the opponent starts to get a little bit closer, hop to the outside, kick the calf a little bit, kick the thigh a little bit. When he was doing that, he was relatively successful. From his back, he was not. Deggy Largan clearing the cage. Second round here, Nurzon Akashev versus Memosh, the renegade Raza. Dex got a camera on. Memosh right back. Where he wants to be a little bit more aggressive with it though, Phil. Yeah, that's a great point, Kerik. He's trying to put the fight on. Nurzan Akashev showing that he's not just going to be a sitting duck for his takedown. That's right, and it's a great way to make sure he doesn't have his back up against that cage. If he's the one leading the dance, yep. Memosh always fainting. Fainting with the hips, fainting with the head, fainting with the hands, fainting with his height. Oh, big left hand there from Nurzan Akashev. Widen the eyes a little bit of Memosh Raza. And Bizan, Bizan always throwing bombs. He's on now responding to his opponent's strategy, trying to move to the outside, throw kind of a Mexican jab, maybe a hook. Come down the middle, maybe an eye poke right there. If there was, it was absolutely accidental. Yeah, you can see immediately from the reaction of Mamosh Raza, I still think that the uppercut is there from Mamosh Raza or the front kick. I know the front kick is dangerous considering that you could get taken down, but if he were to throw the likes of an uppercut to hook to straight combination, I feel like he would have success with that. Front kick's absolutely the one that I see as the opening, by the way. Brave Nation, I'm not sure if it made it onto the broadcast, but Mamosh looked over, hit his fighter's corner and indicated it was completely an accident. And that was an accident, I will bet my life on it. Back to being a little bit more aggressive. Difficult to be aggressive, the right side of aggressive without chasing your opponent, isn't it, Kirik? Hard to strike that balance. Again, that left is great for Nurzan Akashev. Just has to, seems to find the timing of it. 
What you're seeing here, Brave Nation, is the advantage of having your right side forward in a fight. Ordinarily, the hand that lands most readily is your left, which is weaker. Now it's your backhand that can land. Just glanced with that. Memo's dealing with this with a lot of in and out movement. Shots blocked on the arm, but we know it. Oh, another big shot with the left. Nice kicks from Mamosh, but they were landing mostly on the arm. But we know sometimes if you kick hard enough, you can break an arm. Bombs away, Bizon, about to happen. <laughs> another Such a beautiful take down. takedown. Again, not where Mamosh Raza wants to find himself at all. And this is really where Akashev thrives. It is, but Memos is doing a much better job of not, of not conceding that topside control. Trying to stay compact, doesn't want Agashev to get the hooks in. Brave Nation, if you're wondering why Memos Raza doesn't stand up, there is an incredible amount of downward pressure on him. Pressure's partially off, and here he comes. Watch out for a knee to the head, potentially here from Akashev. What you saw there, Brave Nation, was a, an interpretation of the unified rules. It depends on the commission. In some places, if the hand is si simply touching the ground, you can't knee the head. In other places, it cannot be done intentionally. It de and also depends, is, is, the, is, is the hand that's placing down, is it load-bearing? If it's the fingertips, it's not a downed opponent. Hand needs to be flat. The limb needs to be load-bearing, as Deke Larkin has explained to me a number of times. He's been holding off on it. Flash knockdown from Mamosh. He senses a little bit of blood in the water. He's turning Memos it up. Mamosh has got to go. Oh, how disappointing for Mamosh. But great acumen from Akashev. Absolutely brilliant strategy from Akashev. He was out on his feet. He knew his opponent was swarming. Level change, got in on those hips, and boom. And now Akashev finds himself in the dominant position, landing big strikes. Beautiful fight IQ from Nurzon Akashev. Memos up a lot quicker than he was the first time and the second time. He's doing a good job. He has the hand flat on the ground. Now it's the fingertips. Not a downed opponent right now. Like little elbow up to the body. Not sure I've seen that in a long, long time. Here we see some of the action again. I'd love to see that head kick from the Mojraza. It speaks to just how well conditioned Nurzan Akashev is that he was able to bounce right back up from that. A lesser fighter. Most of the fighters in this sport would have dropped. That shin to the head as your head is moving forward is as close to a fight ending strike as you will ever find. But this is where it becomes interesting. So, oh, that's, that's a beautiful shot the more you see it. So wonder that eye orbital didn't break. But this is where it gets interesting, Kirik. So Agashev scored two takedowns, one of which Mamouche was able to get back up. Mamosh was able to land a big head kick in that round, which is probably the closest the fight came to ending. And we know that takedowns don't necessarily, in and of themselves, carry as much weight in mixed martial arts. That Very round good for argument me, to be made for mm. Mamosh, the Renegade Raza winning round two. I guess that's what I was trying to say in a very roundabout way. Thank you for coming to the cheers, big man. Memo, although he spent a lot of time being taken down, has a very clear strategy to win this fight. Oh, he gets dropped. Huge shot from Akashev. Hammer fist being thrown here at Mozzie. I see no intelligent defense yet. I'm not seeing it yet. I think we're down to short time. Memo gives up his back, but now gets flattened out. Big shots again being landed by Akashev. What a way to open the third round. Oh, 
Does Mamouche Raza have his faculties about him enough here to defend? I believe his head is back in the game. We know he's highly conditioned. His body's back in the game. A little bit of a tough position to get out of. The corner of Nirzan Akashev calling for shots from this position. It's hard to do when Mamouche Raza has the hands wrapped up. Mamouche very wisely buying himself some time to recover further. He's pinning those gloves to his body. He's got to free that one-on-one. -on -one. Needs to be wary of Akashev spinning and taking that other hook. Just as I say, he does so. And this is pick your poison territory for Mamosh Raza. Do you stay in this position to try and defend the choke or do you give up the mount and try and work from there, try and shrimp out, reclaim half guard, guard. Nice stock there, that half Nelson from Akashev, just putting pressure on the neck of Mamosh Raza. Further tiring his opponent out, cutting down on the directions his opponent can move in. Essentially three quarter mites here being established, being taken by Mirzan Akashev. Mamosh has the beginning of a knee shield in. Short elbow coming from Nirzan. Work in the body with those elbows, absolutely beautiful work. This is bees on time now. Bees on, bees on him. Ramos does have an underhook on the right side. Those push elbows don't hit with as much power, of course, as a standing straight, but they can sometimes more than compensate by their ability to cut. Memo's doing everything he can to try and stand up. Needs to untangle his own leg though. Two minutes left to go in the third and final round of what's been a tactical battle between these two competitors. Big elbow right to the side of the head from Akashev. Vicious pinpoint placement right behind the ear. Again, it's just solid methodical pressure, pressure landing enough shots to, to keep Memosh Raza from thinking about the submission attack because he's too preoccupied with the shots being landed. Shut down any standing attempt too by grabbing that ankle, working for the back now. Deep breaths being taken by both men. War of attrition here. Memo Shraza yep. attempted to explode and turn in, was not successful. Attempted to rise, was not successful. 30 seconds, Memo, 30 seconds. Memo's done a great job here to try and work to his feet. Is a downed opponent due to that flat hand being down. If I came up on the fingertips, he wouldn't be. Trying to roll for a leg is Momosh Raza. Looking for that heel. No inside heel hook now. But even potentially go for a toe hold. He's back to the heel hook. Looking for the back. Credit to Mamosh Raza for trying that in the final stanzas, but a very, very dominant round for Nurzan Akashev. I don't think it would be without an educated guess to say that that's potentially 29, 28 Nurzan Akashev. I do believe that tonight was about Nurzan Bizan Akashev. We're gonna get a look at some of that in the replay. You saw a clean one too. Slight hook, drop the opponent. Mad dash for the finish now with hammer fists. Pretty much from there, it was all Nurzan Akashev. Most of those are they getting through? No. Are some of those getting through? Yes. 
showing again just how well versed he is as a grappler. Dominant positional control, landing enough shots to try and open something up for himself. Nuruddin Sadikov just congratulated both of the fighters. Our MC, Mr. Lance Murdoch, ascending the steps into the cage. That means that we have an official decision. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. All three of our judges scored the same, 30-27. It is a unanimous decision. To the red corner, the Jan Bison Arkishev! All right, Brave Nation. This next battle is three five and rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of six wins and no losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 69.8 kilograms. Representing your Sultan team and fighting out of Uzbekistan, please welcome Otabek Tahiro. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man to make first an artist with a professional record of 12 wins and 3 losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.56 kilograms. Representing underdog team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan, please welcome Nershan Baizan Akishev. Akashev, a pro since November of 2017. Definitely has the age in terms of experience. Both these guys got into a little bit of the weigh-ins, which was fun for everybody. Orthodox versus Southpaw again. Another interesting wrinkle to the fight and something we've seen a couple of times here tonight. This might be, I don't know, the most Southpaw-heavy card in the history of MMA, well, at least in a very long time. May have something to do with the depth of the wrestlers here. Whoa, that was a nasty, that was no wrestler's kick. Cheeky inside leg kick, and that's what's open all day long for both fighters. One being orthodox, one being southpaw. Again, it's that battle for the, the outside step, isn't it, Kirk? That space on the outside foot. There's multiple things going on here right now, Brave Nation. They are jockeying for that outside position, but they're also trying to download information on their opponent. What's the opponent's reaction time right now? How do they respond to punches? How do they respond to kicks? What if I level change? And when oh. you get the information you need, you take it home. That's what we saw right there from Odebeck Toksarov. Beautiful work, that overhand into the takedown. Has the hands clasped. Just needs to pull those legs out a little bit. Right now, just solidifying the position against this more experienced opponent who's using that veteran savvy and guile to work his way back to his feet. Plants it on a hand. Tahirov needs to take away that post, that framing post. Right now, he's just trying to lace up those legs, Kirik. Odebeck does have the takedown, but on the judges' scorecards, it doesn't count for very much yet. That's what you, you do, do with do it, isn't it? Yeah. What you do with that takedown? If you get somebody down and they pop their hips up, throw an elbow to your head a few times, goes back up to standing, it didn't really count for anything. Slowly and incrementally trying to lace up those legs. This is one of the most dangerous moments in the sport. When you stand up, your back is very open to being taken. That's why that was a beautiful wizard there 
from Bizon. That overhook on the arm stops the back from being taken and sets up takedowns of his own, as you're seeing right here. Right now, finds himself in the dominant position. Needs to turn into Wards to hear of. Thought about diving on a guillotine choke there. Seemed to lose it just as he was dropping down into it. Can he readjust and get it? But the elbow's just a little high, but that does not feel good. Oh, that looks there tight. There is some pressure on that. He's going about it the right way. Tricky. He's not entirely flat, flat backing. Oh, he switched from the arm end to the high the elbow. This looks super this tight. This is horrible. Could it be the 10th win via submission in the career of Akashev? No, it is not. He needs to let go of that neck or he's leaving himself vulnerable to the Von Flu choke. Should Tahirov be aware of it? Nice work from Akashev to let that go. Beautiful positional offense from Odebeck. Genuinely thought we were going to see the third win via guillotine there in the career of Akashev. It was not to be. So here I've shown that he very much deserves to hang with the big names of Central Asian MMA here. Again, what we're seeing here is a little bit more of a, a wrestling influenced ride than what we normally see in mixed martial arts, which is a little more jujitsu oriented. Got a solid body lock. Probably going to use that to oh. back souffle. There it was. Shades of WWE with the belly to back suplex. That is serious wrestling pedigree right there. Maybe a Dagestani handcuff coming up. Akashev trying to get in on that figure four, figure four grip and uses it beautifully. It's a phenomenal his way reversal. This is such beautiful grappling from both men. Tahirov now trying to get in on a, a guillotine choke, but is impeded somewhat by the cage wall. Switch. Oh, momentarily, I thought he may have been switching there, but nope. Akashev pops the head out, and right now just landing bombs. Uh, Akashev right now wants to start landing big, big shots. He's got 45 seconds to imprint what he does on the judges' minds. 45 seconds in what has been a very, very close round. Close round, very technical. Needs about 30 more of those shots that he just threw. Nice work to cause a little bit of separation there from Tahirov. And lands a nice shot off his back too. Partizan crowd here enjoying it. Beautiful work, tried the spinning back kick. Right into the guillotine. Akashev trying to drop in onto it. Oh, that looks tight with only 10 it seconds is to go. Tight, Does he have enough time? Away, he's, he's, he's using a positional defense. He's getting past that guard. Opponent no longer has the leverage to make it work. And the round ends. Absolutely phenomenal round from both of these two. Phil, who do you like in this round? 9-10, 10-9. Uh, for me, it has to be a 10-9 round for Tahiro. What he was doing in those positions, he was able to stave off that onslaught from Akashev, he was able to get himself in the dominant position. He showed his calm and savvy when he had Akashev up against the cage. He showed his calm when he was deep in that guillotine choke and was able, I'm not sure if you noticed, but was able to land a beautiful little elbow crashing down just on the brick. So for my money thus far, 10-9 to Hero. But as I we see, say, Carrick, we are I not see judges. It, Phil. I see it, Phil, the exact same way. It is now 10-9 for Otabek. Now, having said that, I want to point out commentator scores don't mean anything. We're literally looking at this fight in a different way. And I mean that literally. The judges are sitting here and they're looking at the space, but often when standing, looking at the space between the two fighters so their attention doesn't get caught too much one way or the other. That's why fight, fans of fighters often get confused. Those fans are literally looking at a different fight because they are looking at the fighter that they like the most. They're seeing his punches, seeing his or her kicks. The judges here are excellent. But having said all that, I think it is 10-9, Odebeck Toshirov. Still very much all to play for going into the second round of our second main card fight tonight. Ada Beck to here all proving that he is more than ready, willing, and capable of taking that next evolutionary step up in competition. I need to get me one of them gongs. A great way to announce your Oh, beautiful head shot! When you see that head fly away, Brave Nation, it means it was a mighty shot. 
But right now, it's Akashev on top. We know just how tough he is, referencing the fight with Tycoon Kim. He's the type of fighter that can take a lick and keep on ticking. Position is reversed. Bit right now, again, finds himself in a similar position, trying to lace up those legs, Khabib style. And why is that such a popular go-to now in MMA, Kirik? The legs are shelved. It's been known in jiu-jitsu, but never used this way. When the feet are higher than the hips, it yep. is very hard, in fact, impossible to get off the floor. In order to defend it, you typically have to drop at least one hand and push the opponent's hips away. Then you get punched in the face. Agashev gives up the back in an attempt to get out, but right now, Needs to be wary of leaving any space with which Tahirov can get a hook in, but he has managed to get back to his feet. Needs to turn in towards Tahirov. Has the wizard. May look to turn in and clamp down on that. Could be a right on there as oh. Uzbekistan. Second there it was. Second huge takedown for Tahirov. Lands himself right in that side control position. Trying to step over in the mount. May step over to lace up the legs. So far, this. 92nd intro of the second round has been all to hear of. Agashev may try and again give up his back in effort to get up. Post it on an elbow, has one foot up. There he is, by his feet. But Ooh, as we've looks seen... Looks like the pilot is setting up another trip. Yeah, I was just about to say what we've seen with to hear of. What goes up must come down. Fantastic trip. Now he needs to turn in towards the hero of does Akashev. What a beautiful reversal. Doing the right job with his arm placement. Switching in the scarf. Make it a light yeah, here. Uh, oh. that, that head control in that position only very, very rarely works. You ordinarily want an underhook on the far side, not just the head, where this can happen. Something you see a little bit more in catch wrestling than you do in mixed martial arts. Just with the frenetic pace of MMA and the, the positional awareness of the fighters, it can be dangerous. Odebeck very wisely in, in these ambiguous positions when it's a little bit hard to figure out. So one guy got the upper body locks, the other guy getting in there for a takedown. If you can land some shots, stomp on the feet a few times, it really matters on the judge's scorecard. Again. Okay, that's oh. tight. But no We're going to see a positional defense again. That's what he's been using successfully. There it was. Oh, switches to north south, but Akashev again from the bottom. Let's it go, but again, that's just how dangerous Akashev can be with that guillotine. Needs to be wary of eating elbows here. Gives up the back. But there's no quit whatsoever in Nozan Akashev. Every time he finds himself in a disadvantageous position, he's working so hard to make something happen. Phil, when you get phenomenal matchmaking like we've got here in Brave Combat Federation, yep. the, the bouts are really, really even, and that's what makes it really, really exciting. Both these fighters have to dig down. They have to dig deep into their heart. They have to deep, dig deep, deep, deep into their knowledge base and try and find something that the opponent can't quite handle. And whilst Akashev may be 0-2 in Brave, if you look at the people he's fought, Brave 46, he fought Roman Bogatov. Brave 53, that fight of the year contender with Tycoon Kim, he's been in very much against the best the world has to offer. Bogatov at the time, number one ranked in Russia in that weight division, absolutely a beast of a man. I think both fighters understand there's a little lull in the action, we're gonna see him start trying to land some shots. Oh, beautiful, just sneaking. Yep. That underneath the armpit again, the back tick from Tahirov. And Trying to turn out is Akashev, but may find himself getting taken down here again. Nice little trip attempt. Oh, Almost 50 -50. a reversal. And again, takes the back. Fire blanket round control and wrestling here from Tahirov. Completely exhausting, grinding game. Add some face punches, add some elbows to the body and the head. And you've got a devastating round. Big shots being landed to finish the round. Beautiful way to end the round. Any question in your mind, Phil, that it's not 10-9? Odebeck, no, that's, that, off. that's That's as, as clear an illustration of a 10-9 as you will see. But, Gary, one thing I want to put to you, 
now this is the first time that Zahirov in his professional career has gone to a third round. How much of a factor, not just physically, but psychologically, will that play? I believe he's ready for it, Phil. He's, as we've seen, he's already an excellent fighter. This is his debut on the global stage, barring an injury that we don't know about it, and we don't, Brave Nation, we've not heard of any injuries here. He's in the absolute best shape of his life. It is not a secret that you have to fight five fives at this level. I think he's gonna come out guns blazing. I also think Bizon's gonna, he's got a brilliant corner. I think they're gonna tell him you're down 0 to 2. Even if you win the next round, you don't win the fight. Get out there and take your man out. So Nur Sultan Akashev has to get in there and get it done. Has to throw everything and the kitchen sink had to hear of, but will that leave him vulnerable to the takedown that has been paying dividends for to hear of throughout the course of the fight? Cage floor just being cleaned out. That's a big to hear of, screaming. Guttural cry, ready to get things going. Cage door close third and final round. Working the midsection well is to hear of. There's that overhand. Oh, potential ninja choke here. Oh, that looks tight, Kerrick. How much does Akashev have left? And he's out! Fighter is out, absolutely stunning wow. ending to this fight. Bizon's corner told him you got to stop your opponent and he stopped his opponent early. What a way to silence an auditorium full of people. That is why we love mixed martial arts, Kirk. This is why we love Brave Combat Federation. Incredible matchmaking. The, the bout looked pretty much over and done leading into that third round. But Nurzan Akishev picking up his first win here in Brave Combat Federation, doing exactly what we said he needed to do. Go out, throw the kitchen sink, get the huge win. Absolutely phenomenal performance. Now, Phil, he put every single thing he had into that choke. This was his do or die moment. The arms were straining, core was straining, legs were straining. Had that failed, had his opponent's head popped out, there would have been punches coming down, elbows coming down, he was barely able to fend against. Huge moment for the man from Kazakhstan. Nurzan, Akishev, go Bizan! And as I said earlier, all the respect in my heart and soul go to Odebek Toshirov was offered much easier opponents in this, said, no, give me the toughest man you can. That's what he's got, and he was winning two rounds to none. Phenomenal performance by both fighters, and speaking of phenomenal performers, Carlos Kramer, take it away. All right, Brave Nation, what another incredible bout inside the Brave CF 59 arena. This comes to an end at 24 seconds of round number three. Your winner, by guillotine, Nershan Bison Akashev! Representing Akmat Fight Club and Fighting 
out of Uzbekistan. Please welcome Nur Sultan Black Rudy Boyer. He is in the red corner. Ibrahim Mane in the blue. It still blows my mind at 27 years old to be a 40 fight veteran in mixed martial arts. And that's a fairly straight nose as well. <laughs> but that will be put to the test with Ibrahim Mane. Coming up that Mahmoudi gym, you know what sort of a quality striker Mahmoudi is and the fighters that he turns out. You can see Tara Hadley in the corner there, but this is exactly where Nur Sultan wants to bring the fight. As we said, 18 wins via submission. Obviously very competent, very scary, very dangerous in this position. In the guard now of Mane. Guard is wide open. We could see Ruzi Boyev try and step over. But good work here trying to scramble from Ibrahim Mane. Very much indeed. Trying to work his way back to his feet. Looking for Digging a kick more yeah. as well. The great thing about the Kimura position, Brian, as you know, it's not just solely for the submission. You can use it to try and work back to the feet, to try and hit a switch, to try and hit a transition. Absolutely. But he is digging in deep on it. Oh, oh he may he, have it. That's it. You can see. He's got the leg laced. There's a little bit of pressure on the shoulder yet. Nothing he can't handle. Momentarily, the hand popped out to come up beside the rib, but Nur Sultan, with that background of his, was able just to pop it back in. Can grab his own shorts in this situation, but cannot grab the shorts of his opponent. Oh, look at this. Like you said he's used that Kimura oh. grip to reverse the position. And now with the and Kimura. Now, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how crazy would this be, gentlemen? Kimura for Kimura. Now the Sultan Ruzi Boev oh, looking he's... for that. He needs to bend that arm. It's straight. He's trying to straighten that out. It's more akin to a straight arm lock right now. But if he can get that to the back of Ibrahim Mane, just work it up the back nice and close to the body. What a changing of the game this would be, gentlemen. Well, how impressive was it that Ibrahim Mane was able to do that to start with? Then we see the threat from the same position, the same weapon of choice from the Sultan Ruzi Boev. And he is on top. This is somewhere where he probably didn't picture himself being. But There's he a is. beautiful contrast in technique in those two defenses against the exact same attack. You can either extend the arm out mm. to deny your opponent the leverage he needs to break the arm or pull it in. Fantastic technique from both fighters. Potential head arm triangle set up here coming from Ibrahim Mane. He just needs to get his leg free out of that half guard. Yeah, you saw the lockdown position there from mm. a, a Sultan on the bottom controlling that right leg of Ibrahim Mane now looking to explode make space but he's got to be careful takes the arm out of danger now but the oh, mount slips right through end of the Whoa, mount position this would be um, I think the arm is trapped as well can't quite see now he's he fed that under he has that arm underneath you could see potentially Nur Sultan could be using that to try and extend over his head and try yeah. and sneak out the back yeah but the problem is, in a situation like that, your arm is also trapped and it is liable. Your face is there there you go. Beautiful work. I love jiu-jitsu. Oh, triangle, triangle. triangle! This is crazy. Right Move there, triangle. Fantastic Move. tradition. If he can underhook the leg to try and get a little bit more leverage, that's this right. his control. No, no, Sultan. Oh, he's oh, 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 down. Kimura for Kimura. Then into the triangle. Picked up from the Sultan Ruzibowem. A slam finish here at Brave 47. That fight had everything, gentlemen. Transition to transition, my submission for your submission. A slam, knockout, huge. And Brave Nation, under the unified rules of mixed martial arts, that was a 100% legal technique. The fighter on bottom can release the triangle choke and be in no danger whatsoever. If he chooses to keep that choke locked up, and he gets slammed on his head and goes out. Those are the rules. Uh, she, fantastic she, ending to a fantastic fight. Here we're getting to watch it again. Shades of Ricardo Arona and Quentin Rampage Jackson. Oh, he just went to underhook the leg just seconds too late. That's right. And that forearm was buried on the chin as he, his cranium met the mat. Unreal stuff here. Credit to Ibrahim Mane because he brought it tonight. This mm. jiu-jitsu game was on point. He put in trouble. A guy who's got now 19 wins, eight sorry, 18 wins by submission. Now 20 first round finishes in the Sultan Ruzi Boev. What a finish there. Getting the 10th knockout of his career and a finish like that has to be the most satisfying. And you see right above us, Ibrahim Mane watching the replay, asking his coach what happened. Mm. 
And again, we have seen such fantastic talent and skill here in the Brave Cage. And that is another standout finish from Nur Sultan Rizipov, potentially the most impressive of his career. Yeah, against a high-profile, high-level opponent. Tremendous fight showing wrinkles in their career we hadn't seen before. I want to see both these men in the Brave Cage again. All right, Brave Nation, this night just keeps getting more exciting. Another incredible bout. This one ends at three minutes and 12 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by knockout from Akmat Fight Club, Nur Sultan Black Ruzi.